This video will open up a new MacBook Pro. This has the M4 Max chip with 36 gigabytes of unified memory, 32 core GPU, 14 core CPU. And with the M4 Max chip and these capabilities, I want to test some of the capabilities with large language models and machine learning. See if it's going to be a good machine for things like fine tuning or running machine learning inference or other types of calculations that a software developer, particularly in data science machine learning, might want uh, to have. So with this MacBook, I want to also test it against maybe a PC that's running a couple NVIDIA 3090 GPUs. And I'll show some of the comparisons in speed performance with large language models and some of the different sizes that are available, especially some of the open source uh, models. Now, go ahead and just boot it up, um, let it go through some of the initialization, and you can see some of the features here with this MacBook. The thing that you have here is these Thunderbolt uh, 5 ports. Now, for PCs, you could potentially run an external GPU but not with the Mac because it's just not going to be compatible with uh, the NVIDIA. Uh, the GPU on these is really integrated with the CPU. Uh, fortunately, you do have these ports for good data transfer, especially moving things in and out. Okay, so let's go ahead and just download Anaconda. Uh, there's some instructions about how to do this. I like to go get the uh, command line version of this and install Python through the command line. Uh, there is a Python version that comes with your Mac OS distribution. However, you don't really want to use that because it's going to be you know, used by the system. Uh, you want to leave that version alone. So you want to install a new version. I'm just going to change some permissions so I can run this setup script and then it's going to install. It'll ask me for some of these permissions. I'll just accept. And it will install it here in my user's username and then Anaconda 3 folder. And it's going to unpack and extract into that folder. And then what we can do is set it up so that when you start a new terminal, that it just starts this, it's like a virtual environment uh, it tells it that's the package that we want to use, that version of Python versus the Mac OS Python version. And you can even set up further virtual environments if you like. So here are the packages that are there, and it's going to just prepare the Anaconda distribution. And then what we'll do after this is, you know, Anaconda is great. It'll come with Jupyter Notebook. It'll come with some of these other IDEs that you can use. Although, if you're going to be doing some development, you're going to want to have something like uh, VS Code. Okay, so um, here we go. We have our base. Okay, and then I can pip install on that. Um, I'll pip install some of the different packages that I might be using for machine learning and computer vision. And I can do this from the command line terminal. You can also open up a Jupyter Notebook and just pip install from the cells of a Jupyter Notebook as well. Although, you know, do it from the command line, uh, especially initially, is a good idea. Now, if you have a requirements file with specific versions, I'll show you a command to be able to use that. Just pip install dash uh, r with requirements.txt and it'll just install all of these packages for you uh, particularly for a lot of projects they'll distribute a requirements.txt file okay next we'll go here vs code this is going to be kind of like our front end development environment and i'll go ahead and download this and then just drag it into my applications folder so for those that are first time users of Mac OS, it's a little bit confusing. Once you download it, you just have to download it into applications in order to be able to install it as one of the applications. 
All right, once that's done, you can start it up and then get started with VS Code. Okay, I can open a folder um, and then let's say I just want to create a new Python file. All right, I'll trust the contents of that folder. All right, and then uh, let's go and select the language. I'll choose Python and then you'll have to install this Python extension for VS Code. It'll do syntax highlighting and other things relevant to Python within VS Code. Also, VS Code has a notebook viewer. So if you have an IPython notebook, you can open that up in VS Code. It's very nice to be able to run notebooks or regular Python scripts within this environment. So I'm just going to create a hello world and then run it just to see that it prints out hello world. And it does successfully. So let's go on to the next thing. Let's go and create a Jupyter Notebook. You can either run this with something like VS Code or with Jupyter Notebook. This is a web browser based interface to Python with cells and markdown. It's a very rich environment to be able to create uh, Python applications, especially as you're developing them. And you want to run cells, maybe out of order, run it again without running the entire script. So there's Jupyter Notebook. You just start that from the command line with Jupyter Notebook, and then it'll launch that. All right. Also, if you'd like to come to the apmonitor.com slash DDE, Data Driven Engineering website, give some more instructions about how to install Python and packages. Also, get you started as well with Python with several tutorials. So here's the instructions on how to install in different environments like Windows. Here are different Python packages, especially for data-driven engineering. So just review some of those. Again, if you'd like to pip install from a requirements.txt file, just use that requirements.txt file down below and then install. Also, there is the uh, this one is the machine learning for engineers course as well, just slash PDS instead of slash DDE, and it also gives many modules on machine learning. So, for example, here with concrete strength and trying to create a regression or classification. All right, so lots of learning modules there if you're interested. Now, let's go on to large language models. Here's Olana. This is a great package for testing, running, managing these different open source models. So I'm going to allow downloads from Olama. And just like VS Code, I'm going to take that application and then I will drag it into my applications folder. So I'll download it, then downloads, and I'll drag it over to applications. So there's applications and drag it over and then it will install the application. I can go down and double click on it. Okay, and that will, okay, do you trust it? And welcome and we'll install command line. Let's click install, enter password. And then it shows some instructions on how to run this. Okay, so there I have uh, Olama. I can come to the terminal now and if you do Olama pull, okay, then Llama 3.2 you can download it. Uh, also, if you just do Olama run then the name of your model, uh, it will run. I'm just going to let this run uh, through. It's going to download. Uh, it's going to take just a minute or two. Okay, on some of these I'm going to speed it up by two times. Later I'll speed it up by four times just so you don't have to wait for this to download. Alright, so it's going to download and install. It's installed that Llama 3.2 model. And then I can ask questions from this command line. And you can see somewhat the speed of how that's running here on the MacBook Pro. Okay, so that model, that's a 3 billion parameter model, um, fits within the, you know, within this 36 gigabytes of shared 
memory, uh, but let's try a different one. This is the vision model. This is 11 billion parameters. I think it's about six gigabytes or so after the four bit quantization that they use to reduce uh, the memory and also speed up the inference time. All right, so let's go ahead and run this one, the vision. And okay, again, this is sped up by twice. But you can see it does pretty well. It's, you know, some of these smaller uh, language models, you can see uh, very good performance here on the MacBook. This is the M4 Max chip uh, with the 36 gigabytes of memory and then 32 cores for the GPU, 14 cores for the CPU as well. Okay, so we're going to let this next one download and then we'll, um, you'll see how well this one works. This is the 90 billion parameter model. This one is going to be, I think it's, it's around 50 gigabytes that's running. Uh, we'll check that in just a little bit, but 50 gigabytes is going to be over that 36 gigabytes that, uh, you know that it's going to fill up more than I have for the memory. So what it's going to have to do is, you know, swap out chunks of that memory in order to be able to even do the inference. So expect this one to be slow. Um, you know, when you have a C, like a, let's say you have uh, not a MacBook, but um, let's say you have a Linux. Uh, system that's running uh, where you have a separate GPU than a CPU, oftentimes you have you know lots of uh, GPU RAM, VRAM, and then also CPU and the RAM that's associated with that. So if you have spillover, you can also do part of the calculations with the memory, okay, of the RAM memory, and then the GPU VRAM, uh, and those two can combine to form this greater collection of memory. But you'll see here, I just to produce I am, it took about 10 minutes to do that. So let's go on to another one, the QWQ. This is the Quinn uh, model. Uh, you know, this one, we'll download it and install it. This one should be able to fit within the memory of the MacBook Pro. So this one should be a lot faster then the Llama 3.2 90 billion parameter vision model. So let's go and just try this. So Llama run and QWQ. And this right now is probably the most, uh, it's at the top of the list uh, for the Llama downloads. I think there's a lot of excitement about this model. Okay, now let's test it here on a dual GPU. This is a workstation with two 3090s, uh, you know, they're running here, 48 combined uh, VRAM. You can see the 3.2, the 3 billion parameter model, very fast. Here's the 11 billion parameter model, very fast as well. Again, this is four times speed up. But even the vision model, look at this one. The one that took about 10 minutes just to produce two tokens, uh, even though it has to spread it between the GPU and the CPU, you can see it's going to still produce, uh, you know, about seven second, seven tokens per second or so on this system. So a dual 3090 uh, system with plenty of RAM as well and a capable CPU still can run this one. It's a little bit slow, but uh, you know, it's, it does okay with that. Okay. So, um, but the MacBook, is not going to be able to run this one. So let's try Nematron as well. Okay, this is another one that's right at that limit or just a little bit above the 48 gigabytes of VRAM, but a very capable model uh, from the NVIDIA folks have created this Nematron LLM as well. Okay, so you can see it runs very fast. And then let's try another one. This is the QWQ, okay, the Quen model. And I think it's a 
32 billion parameter model. So it's going to fit within the VRAM. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed some of these benchmarks and the comparisons. Um, you know, let me know what you think. If uh, you're thinking about getting a MacBook Pro with this M4 Max chip and just your experience with running machine learning calculations.